Joining us is Senate candidate Christina Pascucci. So good to have you. Great to be with you both. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the time. No problem. So you had a, a, a lengthy career in media. So yeah. you've covered a lot of political news. Um, even though you're not in politics, uh, you know quite a bit about politics. So what motivated you to run? You know, Why do you want to make the transition <laughs> from media to politics? Enter this crazy world of politics. And I mean, you know what it's like right. with what you've been doing on a whole other level. But I, I traversed the state of California for almost 20 years as a journalist and interviewed thousands of people really explored a lot of these most pressing issues of our time. And the more and more I spoke to Californians, the more I saw that their quality of life was going down and that they weren't having their needs heard or met by our elected leaders. And so I wanted to step in and do something about it. I'm very passionate about people. I'm a humanist at heart. And I've also worked in war zones around the world. And as a humanitarian, I've gone to more than 100 countries across seven continents interviewing world leaders. And so I think I'm really uniquely positioned for the Senate specifically. So Christina, obviously people wanna know what the difference between you and Schiff and Katie Porter and Barbara Lee are. Yeah. So uh, what makes you stand up from them? Well, they have more than 50 years together already being in office. And I think we see the results of some of their policies. Um, I think that you know it's time for a new fresh face for the Democratic Party, someone who really cares about the people who's not tied to special interests. And my only special interest is for the future of my daughter. I'm five and a half months pregnant. Oh, wow. And I, I, when I think of the future she could see right now, it makes me wanna cry, it's so painful. You know, We can do so much better than we're doing. And it is time for the next generation of leaders to, to step up and do it. Okay, but how about policy? On policy, where do you differ from them? Um, well, I am more moderate. Um, I think that we have to have a different approach, for example, to business in the state of California. Right now, the the solution always seems to be just to tax more. And I think there's other ways that we can mm -hmm. address that where we're spurring innovation, we're spurring uh, you know, small businesses to thrive. We're giving them tax incentives to support their workers with childcare, which is really important to me as a mother-to-be, mm -hmm. um, with things like transportation, because that's really hard for them to get People always talk about some of their biggest hurdles are transportation, housing, childcare. We need to give tax incentives to businesses to address those for their workers. Yeah, let me jump in on that because you know California has always been a high tax state, mm -hmm. but that never really stood in the way of innovation. I mean, Silicon Valley got its start mm -hmm. in Silicon Valley. Yeah. Um, you know, the agricultural industry is huge in California. Obviously, the entertainment industry is huge in California. But to be fair, there has been more and more members of the business community fleeing California for other states. And they never really cite the tax issue as the main reason. They'll talk about, yeah, it's not a overly friendly state for businesses. Uh -huh. There are a lot of regulations. And I do think there are some areas where um, some red tape can be cut, okay? Mm -hmm. But I think their biggest issue that businesses have been having is the way the state handled COVID with the shutdowns. And also, it's not really a friendly environment right now for anyone, including the residents. Yeah. You know, there There is a crime wave in the state, especially the big cities in the state, Los Angeles and San Francisco. Mm -hmm. and. There are also huge issues with how the state has tackled um, homelessness as well. Yeah. So how would you deal with those issues differently from the mm -hmm. other candidates vying for that seat? Yeah, well, I do think a big part of it is overregulation and overtax for businesses, according to those I've spoken to. And mm -hmm. like you said, also public safety, homelessness. They say where are their taxpayers, taxpaying dollars going? When they look around them, they feel like they don't see the results of that. So. Um, where I differ is I believe I have a dream and a vision of California and what we can create where we're supporting kids and education. I think right now the way it's set up is from the moment that kids come into the world, we are not supporting them to the greatest extent possible. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is uh, maternity leave as, as one example. I mean, I wasn't gonna have maternity leave at my former job beyond I was gonna have a very small percentage of my pay and only for a limited amount of time. I think that our mothers and our kids deserve better so that they can bond with their mothers. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Education, federally we've under -funded, underfunded education for decades. And how can you expect to have a thriving society when you're not starting there? That's the foundation for a thriving society in my opinion. Right, and so how about campaign finance? So uh, you mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, we don't want to uh, do the things like we've been doing. 
What are your views on corporate PACs or super PACs? I don't want to take any corporate PAC money. Um, I think that watching firsthand the money that needs to go into an election is insane. It's preventing really good people from running for office and it's BS and it has to stop. And, and one of my opponents, um, there was a PAC that was looking at supporting him and he did work with the executive director. And you know, to me that seems not right and unethical when you're doing business with the executive director of a PAC and then that PAC chooses to support you with money. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, things like that. Who was that? Garvey. Oh, Garvey, okay. Well, Republican, of course. <laughs> but on the other hand, Democrats do it a lot no, too. Democrats yeah. Do it yeah. All the time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. Schiff right now has 30 plus million dollars. And I'm a millennial, so I'm coming up with different ways to approach, you know, a big part of that cost goes to TV ads, for example. I'm sure you know $12 million a week in California alone to reach all the TV markets. That's insane. So you you have to get creative and use social media and other means to reach voters. And I, I think that a lot of voters are getting their news anyway on social media now, as we've seen. So, um, and online. So yeah. uh, it's, it's, there's other ways to sound good about, about it. So I'm curious how the Democratic Party is treating you because, and I'm curious who you think that they're favoring because usually they favor someone in an election, and and it's never the progressive firebrand. But you're yeah. not a progressive firebrand. You're practical. You're more moderate. So that's why I'm genuinely curious. Like if you yeah. were if you were in that category, I wouldn't have to bother asking you, right? <laughs> but right. so how are they treated you, and what's your sense of who they're favoring? I think it's clear that they have three favorites: the people who have been establishment politicians. For, for a long time, um, especially Schiff with his number of endorsements early on. I mean, it's clear. Um, there have been Democrats who have approached me who are in elected office who are a little bit different, of a different mindset. And they've told me they're so energized by this campaign. They want to see fresh blood. They want to see new approaches because clearly what we've been doing is not effective. So, you know, as I read the interviews that you've done, I, I, I really do want to know. Like policy wise, what makes you stand out from Adam Schiff, right? Like, I did see something in regard to your thoughts on immigration. In fact, you know, during your interview with Politico, they reported that you suggested Democrats have shied away from talking about the humanitarian crisis happening at our border out of fear of running afoul of their progressive base and giving ammunition to the hard right. And you pledged to fight against the disinformation warfare that's being waged around immigration and more broadly. So I wanted you to elaborate on that a little bit more. I want, yeah. I'm curious what you think about it because, look, just to give you a sense of where I'm at, you know, for the first time you have big blue cities across the country realizing that there is a migrant crisis. Mm-hmm. You know, you see it in Chicago, you see it in New York, and I think the federal government has dropped the ball. But I'm curious what your thoughts are and what you would do differently as a member of the Senate. Yeah, there's a few things to touch on there. So first off, members of the Democratic Party are saying that there isn't even an issue with the border, period. <laughs> I know, yeah. You know, and there was this this interview I saw on CNN where, where um, someone, a member of the squad was talking about that and, and she was asked, you know, so you don't think there's a border crisis? And she said, no. And I think that is disingenuous and She's lying to the American people. There is a humanitarian crisis, it's very clear. There's a major issue with sex trafficking. That's something I've worked on extensively around the world. Um, I'm also involved in a a nonprofit that tackles that head on. And and so I think we need to look at it from the humanitarian perspective and also from the national security perspective because there is no doubt both of those are issues. And I've been involved with both at the border. So um, one important thing as a journalist and something that makes me different too is storytelling. Mm -hmm. Right now we are so polarized, we're dehumanizing one another, we are othering people who disagree with us. And a big point to make is is that we're all Americans and we should all be in this together. And a net, you know, if, if I win and you lose, it's a net loss. Mm-hmm. So we have to figure out a way to collaborate and find a win-win and reach out to those we disagree with. So in with when it comes to the border specific policies that I would support are for example, more judges to help expedite the asylum seeking process. Uh, I would support more border patrol agents. They're just swimming, they're completely outnumbered and, and they really need help doing their job. Um, I would support a more efficient path to citizenship. I think that's incredibly important. And you know, that's just as a starting point. All right. Okay, well, Christina Pescucci, where can the audience learn more about your campaign? ChristinaForCalifornia.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Really good to see you guys. All right, and there it is. And the links will be in the description box if you want to check out the website, etc. 
Thanks for watching. If you become a member, you get to watch all this ad-free, except for, of course, this ad. Still, hit the join button below.